Welcome to Spoiler Warning, where we talk wrestling news. And there is plenty of wrestling news already for us to be diving into. Our headlines today mostly focused on three big stories. We will be talking the Bray Wyatt tribute being planned by Bo Dallas. Who's going to be involved? When are we going to see that kick off? We're going to be talking contract negotiations, Becky, Seth, and Drew McIntyre, as well as the updates from PW Insider. We're going to be talking Rossi Ogawa launching Marigold Wrestling and plenty more about who we may see in that division. We're then going to be talking the WWE Draft, NXT names who are looking to be called up. I've got seven names ready to list that I've heard are looking at call-ups to the main roster. We also have a little bit on Nick Khan and who he's looking to work with when it comes to wrestling promotions. And we also have a slight update on Rhea Ripley. I know a lot of people are interested in the Rhea Ripley situation. I've been chasing this one to try and find out. Yes, she's currently carrying an injury. More on that later. We will be starting with the Bray Wyatt story. I simply have more information on that one and I've been compiling that one for a little while, most of the day, let's be fair, to make sure I've got all the right information. So I'm going to start there. We will, of course, be answering as many of your questions as we can and I will reiterate the headlines as we go as well. Already 50 people here, 24 likes. Let's get that number up because the more likes we have in here, the more viewers we have in here. We always have basically double the amount of viewers as we have likes. So if we're able to get more, please consider hitting that thumbs up button and getting this ball rolling for me. So there's going to be a lot. Bo Dallas is planning a tribute character to Bray Wyatt, which may include some allusions to Uncle Howdy. Now, this is not the the Bray Wyatt story as was originally pitched. What I'm being told is that it's a, a continuation of the story, but it's with the assistance of the writing team because the story laid out by Bray Wyatt is no longer available to tell. Only Bray Wyatt himself knew what that story was going to be. So Bo Dallas is essentially writing a Silmarillion. He's essentially writing a compendium of greatest hits of Bray Wyatt and trying to make that work in a way that everyone's going to be satisfied with. It is not the same story. Nobody knows the story. Bo Dallas is developing his own version of the Bray Wyatt story. He's going to involve quite a lot of people with this. It's not just going to be Bo Dallas and theories about a Wyatt 6 being involved seem like they're actually going to be hitting the mark. Eric Rowan is rumored to have signed a WWE contract and is actively canceling other appearances in the meantime. I have not been able to confirm this of Eric Rowan or his team personally, but the WWE uh, sources there do indicate that Eric Rowan is likely to be involved in the Bo Dallas story. Bo Dallas is said to be looking to get the whole band back together as best they can, which includes Eric Rowan. It also includes Braun Strowman. Eric Rowan's contract is not said to have kicked in yet and will only actually kick in upon starting to make appearances on WWE TV, but Dallas is planning to tease for a while before kicking in. As regards Braun Strowman, he's not believed to be fully fit and ready to get back to ac action as of yet, but he is expected to start making TV appearances, likely behind a mask, but very obviously him in the meantime as a member of whatever Bo Dallas's troop ends up being referred to. Upon being cleared, he'll be able to step in, but the story is not expected to be particularly physical just yet. It is a cerebral story. It is an emotional story. It is not a story where they step in and just start throwing people around. That's the situation that we are looking at as we speak. There is one more name that needs to be mentioned before I start talking about when we're going to see things happening. That name is Alexa Bliss. And this name actually in many ways informs when this is likely to be happening. Alexa Bliss is training for a WWE return. She's said to be interested in working with Dallas on a character that she already wanted to carry Bray Wyatt influences. And in fact, the loss of Bray Wyatt is said to have galvanized her into working a little harder to make this happen, though she was working pretty hard anyway. Alexa Bliss's rough return date in the WWE books was SummerSlam time. And this tells us a lot about the next steps. The WWE is not just teasing the Bo Dallas story, it's also teasing quietly a pinnacle of the Bo Dallas story. Around SummerSlam is expected to be the key date for Bo Dallas and the rough kickoff point for everything. Teases are expected to run until around this time, marrying up with the time taken by The Fiend 
to officially debut. SummerSlam is going to be a big one for the WWE. There is a lot of teases, a lot of story to go first, and there's plenty of moments, unfortunately, when the whole thing might be pulled. But right now, the WWE are very happy with the social media interaction that they're seeing, and it is being compared quite favorably to the arrival of Bray Wyatt at Extreme Rules two years ago. That is the current plan and everything I know about what the tribute to Bray Wyatt is going to be, who is going to be involved in it, and when it is said to kick off. Okay? We have plenty more news to come. We're talking Becky and Seth. We're talking Drew McIntyre. We're talking Marigold Wrestling. I have seven names of NXT stars who are looking at potential call-ups during the WWE draft. We have rumors of Nick Khan and what wrestling promotions he wants to work with. And we do have something to update you with on Rhea Ripley. She is injured. What that means, we'll talk about shortly. Pardon me, shortly. I'm going to catch up with the chat. We have 34 likes and 87 viewers. Please remember to check. If you haven't already, hit that thumbs up. We'll get this ball rolling. And before you know it, we are absolutely flying. Bailey says, how likely is Liv about to expect real fan heat if they lean hard into this Rhea Ripley injury? Yes and no. Liv Morgan has a bit of a niche and a cultish fan base who will stick with her. Wiggly says, yo, welcome, Wiggly. Shifty says, yo, Tom, what's up? Welcome, Shifty. Leon says, hi, Tom. Hope you're doing well. Doing very well. Thank you. Richard says, hello, Tom. Are people like Blair Davenport, Gigi Dolan, or JC Jane on the call-up list? I'll be reading the call-up list out very shortly. Joey says, hey, Tom, do you have any news on Eric Rowan possibly returning? I've uh, explained that as best I can. Jess says, hit the like button. Thank you, Jess. Joey says, which main roster people do you see getting drafted to NXT? More on that later when my predictions come out. I don't have names at the moment beyond what I've said in a short earlier, which is Karrion Cross and AOP. I have had a pretty good one so far, Mark. I mean, Monday's not technically a weekend, but I'm still enjoying my time. Hope you're good. Michael says, hi, Tom. Welcome, Michael. Eric says, the shame. It seems like every time Rhea gets an opportunity to be a number one girl, something goes wrong. She's been the champion for more than a year, mate. Joey says, is there going to be a new Wire family with Bo Dallas? I've shared everything I know on that one. Richard says, hello, Tom. With Drew's contract not re-upped yet, is it too big of a risk to run a Scotland show without him locked in? No. Ishi says, do you think Uncle Howdy should return in October at Extreme Rules? I've shared everything I know on that one. JMG says, Becky's not taking time off. Melzer and SRS said she was. I'll have more on that shortly. Ishi says, they should bring back the Funhouse Uncle Howdy's own version, which is a possibility. Richard says, hello, Tom. With Rhea's new injury, is it possible to turn Queen of the Ring into a true tournament for the crown and vacate the belt? We will be talking about the possibilities a little later. Ishi says, will we see QR codes? I've shared every piece of information that I have at this point in time. King Azza says, if she is hurt, I would like Liv to win the championship and drop to Rhea when she returns. Robin Dave says, any more news on Roman versus Rock? I've shared all the news that I have on that one already. Richard says, four months of teasers seems too long. Will fans move on by then? It is always a possibility that fans will move on from a storyline. What I will say is that they at least had the patience to wait when it came to Bray Wyatt, and I expect they will afford the same courtesy to Bo Dallas. Wiggly says, I was just thinking once the storyline culminates, could we see not just Bray Wyatt, but a Wyatt family induction in the Hall of Fame? It's possible, though it's unlikely. Sovic says, hello, Tom. Hope you're doing well. I want to know when will Jacob Fatu debut in WWE and would he debut in main roster or NXT? Uh, he will debut when he is ready. Tamatonga was essentially kept back until this moment because they wanted him to be fully au fait with the WWE style of wrestling. They don't want to just throw people in the deep end and say, hi, if you have a bad moment, we're going to fire you. They will be preparing Jacob Fatu for a big moment, which will be coming in the months to come. Mark says, I really, really hope they all pull this off. I want more than anything for Bo to pull this off. Razar says, what's going on with the Raw and SmackDown stages? Are the smaller ones going to be the norm now? Peter and have reported that they are. Richard says, is the NXT mid-card women's title a test to see if the main roster could house one? Nope. Shifty says, rumours circulating, new tag titles will be debuting tonight. Is it true? I've heard that exact rumour about 15 times and it's never happened. So I will take my time. I... What the... Wiggly, why are you winking at me, mate? Chris says, Rhea Ripley is tied. Bailey's reign has 380 days as champion. And in fact, uh, Rhea Ripley has responded to uh, different Twitter accounts uh, sharing that particular stat and uh, responded positively. 
Eric says, good afternoon, Tom. How are you? How's your voice feeling? Bit rough, as you can likely tell, but not, not too bad. Uh, Wiggly, the Saudi deal runs for another two years. Once I say, Tom, did you see my question? I may have, I may have missed it. Hopefully I've read it out already. If not, let me know and I'll do it again. Noob says, hello, Mr. Collihue. How are you doing today? Doing well, thank you, Noob. Welcome to the show. Wiggly, we'll see. Richard says, hello, Tom. Is Jade and Bianca being a tag team away to hide Jade's in-ring weaknesses or more so a heel turn storyline to save for later? The former. More the former than the latter. Hello, Spider Boss. Zane says, I don't get why WWE call up NXT wrestlers and not use them like Odyssey Jones. They did have a plan to use Odyssey Jones. They just never got around to it. Sean says, hi, Tom. Welcome, Sean. Shifty says, what does Seamus do tonight? Just talk or call somebody out. I would imagine he's going to have his eye on the Intercontinental Championship match, but I don't imagine he's going to get directly involved. Sean says, do you see Carmella, Alexa and Braun being drafted? I see one of them being drafted. King Arthur says, do you see the Bloodline versus the Bloodline 2.0 at War Games? Well, on Monday, on Fridays, I should say, spoiler warning, I did mention the prospect of a Bloodline Civil War, and I did mention the prospect of The Rock appearing in War Games. Spider-Boss says, uh, something about Raj Giri's opinion. Joey says, fight full of project Carmelo Hayes and Druganova locks for the main roster. They did. Juan says, any, did they say locks? People throw the word lock around a lot. Juan says, any updates on the potential loss for what TK did last week? Ah, gotcha. Juan, there is no possible update I can give legally as well as anything. I can state that based on GDPR rules here in the UK, TK breached those guidelines. But I would not be able to tell you, this person's going to sue, that person's going to sue. I'd be massively in breach of any actual ongoing lawsuit. Yes, Arctic, we do have information on Rossi Ogawa's promotion. Uh, it's coming shortly. Uh, Richard says, hello, Tom. How many women from NXT can you see called up? I have a list of seven people from NXT who I'm hearing will be called up. So I will read them out shortly. Somebody's singing outside. Sovic says, isn't Bron already part of SmackDown? Yes. Who said otherwise? Jess says, just have Dominic defend the title on Rhea's behalf. Don't think that's how that works. Shifty says, Joe will get sent back to SmackDown due to the Bloodline story. Couldn't tell you. Spider-Boss says, it was nice, the Bloodline segment on SmackDown. Do you think we could see Roman as a babyface? Eric says, I'm confused. Isn't Becky supposed to be taking time off? More news on that very shortly. Joey says, will Rossi's promotion be a way to feed WWE talent? More news on that shortly. Uh, Wiggly Clash tickets will go on sale when they do. At uh, this point in time, I'm not sure of the actual date for it. A very happy person, I'll tell you that. Unfortunately, my windows are closed. That's just the area. That's the situation. I mean, that's that's a way to describe it, Mustafa, and one close to my heart, but I, I would never refer to Bo as Sauron. Doesn't work for me. So it says, any updates on Charlotte Flair and Carmella return? Uh, they're doing well. Spider Boss says, do you think we could see the Usos reunion? Yes. Sean says, if Rhea is injured, do you think she vacates the title? More on that shortly. Alex says, hey, Tom, a war games. I'm expecting Roman, the Usos, and Sam... They're determined. Roman, the Usos, and Sami Zayn versus The Rock, Jacob Fatu, Tamatonga, and Solo Sokoa. What do you think about Sami Zayn being involved? Uh, it's an option. It's way too far out, guys. War games is a half a year away and then some. I've shared what I know. I've shared what I think. We'll see what happens. John says, Julia finished up with Stardom. When do you think we see her on NXT? She has a contract. And we'll be seeing her soon. Mark says, is Gunter having some time off before he comes back and wins the World Heavyweight Championship? Or is he still in the storyline with Sammy? You've asked like so many things in one thing. And I can say with certainty, the answer is no, based on the whole question. Thank you, Roger. I appreciate that update. Beatrice says, any updates on Rhea? Yes, it will be one of my pieces of news a little later during the show. Shifty says, how long can we expect Gunter out? I wouldn't expect him out. Sovic says, is the rock free by war games? Roughly around that time, he'll be available, yes. I've answered that question so many times, Wiggly. Spider Boss says, who do you see as the first opponent for Cody? AJ. AJ Styles. Roman Dave says, if Roman turns back into a baby face, they need to keep Paul Heyman with him. It's an option. Next up, we're going to talk Becky, Seth, and of course, Drew McIntyre's contracts. We do have 92 people watching and 39 likes, less than 40. One more gets us to 40. Let's get that ball rolling, guys, and let's get up to 100 viewers. If we can get up to, let's say, 50 likes, you're going to be very happy with the overall shooting up of the numbers that we get. One more 
gets us to 40. Let's get this ball rolling. So let's talk Becky Lynch and Seth Rollins. Becky Lynch and Seth Rollins have now started their contract negotiations as reported by myself on Twitter and in fact on WTF Wrestling yesterday when I went real in depth on this one. Seth, as we know, is taking time off to rest his knee. Yes, there have been reports that Becky Lynch was to do so and I've been told the same. There was and is a plan for Becky Lynch to take some time off. However, as the WWE headed to Europe, she's taken the opportunity to essentially work from home so it's an opportunity for her to go home, see some people, work a couple of dates in the meantime, and keep herself busy. As I've mentioned before, Becky doesn't really do breaks. When she took her last break in 2020, she still made a point of popping up for a promo or two. That's the plan going forwards. Becky Lynch is still Becky Lynch. She will still be as involved as Becky Lynch wants to be, but she gets an opportunity to pop home, see some people, and occasionally pop a crowd. She will be taking that opportunity. Yes, there is still a break impending, but someone's got to be there to negotiate those contracts. As regards Seth, he's expected to still be in the WWE for around SummerSlam time. He's an easy backup option in case CM Punk isn't fully cleared and his time off will take him a little further closer to SummerSlam. The plan is still to negotiate together as two of the top names in the industry, even though if Seth takes an actual break and Becky takes a hypothetical break, they will technically have contracts that finish at different times. They can still have contracts renewable that start at different times. Moving on to Drew McIntyre here, Peter Insider have reported that he only has five or six weeks left of his deal. Now, let me dive into this a bit further. If you've seen WTF Wrestling, you'll already know the details here, but it isn't entirely accurate. That is a hell of a lot of letters. Number one, thank you for subscribing. Welcome to the show. As regards Drew McIntyre, the contract that he has is not going to be wrapped up before the end of May. It's just not quite the case. McIntyre is expected to work with WWE either under contract or otherwise until Clash of the Castle. As I mentioned during WTF Wrestling yesterday, assurances have been made that make it very clear that Drew McIntyre, as I've mentioned, at least for now, is going nowhere. I expect him to win the championship, Clash of the Castle, and to have his new contract announced almost immediately afterwards. I can't imagine a world in which this does not happen. But as I'm constantly seeing as breaking news, he hasn't signed a deal yet. Every single day, there seems to be breaking news that Drew McIntyre has not yet put pen to paper. I should start doing that. Every single day, I should just start posting, McIntyre hasn't, hasn't signed a new, de new deal. McIntyre hasn't signed a new deal. McIntyre hasn't signed a new deal. And then one day, what am I going to do? Nothing. One day, I'm just going to go quiet. And I bet you'll all notice, won't you? I bet you'll all notice. We have news on Rossi Ogawa's Marigold Wrestling next. Then it is the names in NXT that I've been told are looking at a call-up. We have rumours about Nick Khan working with different wrestling promotions and an update on the situation with Rhea Ripley. I'm going to catch up with the chat and then we're going to go into that. Beatrice says it's good or bad news at least. Depends if you're a fan of Rhea Ripley. Spider-Boss says do you think The Rock can be drafted in the draft? Nope. King Aza says I see Roman getting a rematch against Cody and Solo costing the match and setting up Roman versus Solo. Juan says Peter Insider confirmed your report that MJF is still under contract. Go figure Tom. Always nice. Always nice to have a report confirmed. Alan says The Rock posted a tweet with four pics of him and Cena at Mania 40 with the caption, The Rock can always see you, boy. Yeah, so we should. I did mention that a, a Rock Cena moment was planned. Did you all spot it? Then says, I'd like to see WWE versus TNA in War Games. You will not be getting that. Bazaar says, I wonder if Rhea's injury is going to affect Becky's time off schedule. Could do. Spider Boss says, Becky doesn't need to be a full timer at this point. She deserves a part time deal. Shifty says, where is CM Punk getting drafted? I'm assuming Raw. Nothing is finalised yet. Joey says, who do you see Roman wrestling at SummerSlam? Right now, I don't. We're going to see things come together as we get closer to time. Joey says, it sounds like the talent relations guy who was fired wasn't negotiating any contracts. He wasn't. But to be fair, that wasn't entirely his job. His job was to alert Nick Khan that contracts were coming up so that Nick Khan could start negotiating. He did not do so. Spider-Boss says, I hope WWE keep the promises they made to Drew. WWE have made promises that they couldn't keep in the past. Very true. One of the reasons Bobby Lashley isn't the happiest right now. 
Uh, Roger says Natalia's contract is set to expire soon. Source 411 Mania. The source is Fightful, mate. Beatrice says, I'm the biggest fan of Rhea. That's why I asked. The news is incoming. Sovic says, is it possible for Rossi Ogawa to work with NXT like how NXT did with AJPW? More on that shortly. Ricky says, hey Tom, buddy, happy Monday. Can I ask you a question? Is Roman coming back to his big dog gimmick? Nope. Or is he coming back to just himself as face? Who said he's going to be a face? You're asking me, when Roman makes this change, which isn't confirmed, is it going to be like this or like this? It's not happening, mate. Mark says, shall we get chat to guess the seven names in the draft from NXT? Wait for it, mate. I I've got this. Don't you worry. Uh, Wiggly, a kind of, but also teeth. Get the table says, good evening, Tom. Out of those three, who do you think is their main concern for re-signing? Drew. Drew is the priority right now. His contract expires soonest. Shifty says, do you think Netflix is going to want Cody to stay at Raw since how much they paid? Netflix do not care. As I say, and as I've said before, Netflix are getting all of WWE outside of the US. They could not care less about the US. JJ says, hey Tom, so since Becky is working some days, does that mean she won't have to work SummerSlam since it'll be after her contract expires? I don't have the details of that, unfortunately. Um, we'll see how it goes. Wiggly, no. Alice says, what I would do is book The Rock versus Cody at SummerSlam and have Roman cost The Rock at, as his return if The Rock is available, of course. Um, yep, you're going for it with that fantasy booking. Uh, Wiggly, Asuka has never had a main event push and she's never going to. Wiggly says, what about Kyrie? Will she get a singles push? More on that shortly. One says, speaking of Nick Khan, Tom, today TK was asked about it and the potential of ever working with AEW. All TK said was that's interesting. It would depend on the circumstances. Again, more on that soon. Spider-Boss says it took a while before WWE gave Lashley a match with Brock. WWE better give Drew what he wants. WTF Wrestling, once again, yesterday's video will likely be a lot of interest to all of you. Beatrice, the news is coming. Sid says, do you think Natalia will get a new contract? That depends on the WWE. I'm not just going to sit here and say, this person's going to get fired, that person's going to get fired, because that's not what we do here. And we're not going to just make stuff up just to be able to answer a few questions. We are heading into Marigold Wrestling next. We have 102 viewers, 52 likes. Thank you guys for getting that ball rolling. If you can keep it going, let me know. Hit that thumbs up. Three more gets us to 55. Rossi Ogawa has announced Marigold Wrestling. As I previously mentioned, and I saw some people getting very overexcited here, William Regal is in charge of NXT Asia not Rossi Ogawa. Rossi Ogawa is involved, but NXT Asia falls firmly under the branch of William Regal, who's also overseeing NXT Europe. So the NXT expansion is William Regal's to cover, not Rossi Ogawa's. A lot of people seem to think this was going to be the announcement of NXT Asia. That was not the plan. Ogawa cannot announce things related to a company that he can't run. He cannot announce anything under the NXT brand unless he is given something purely to announce. Now Ogawa is beginning his own efforts but will continue to work with the WWE to bring in the best and the brightest that he works with. Julia will be joining NXT soon but is likely to at least briefly undertake some double duty. She's also unlikely to be the only one as Ogawa now has access to the WWE talent pool and a wealth of talent are looking to work with him. William Regal essentially has lined up people who may be of assistance to Marigold and who could make brief excursions out there. The WWE and Nick Khan are looking to essentially pick up the excursion system that New Japan has made famous. So people that they're not using for a little while could go to a different promotion and continue to promote the WWE. Kairi Sane is said to be particularly vocal backstage about wanting to assist the launch of Marigold and I suspect she will get her opportunity sooner rather than later. Mustafa says, I would have gone with Bo as Feanor. Yeah, we're really wandering off topic here, mate. Beatrice is hyped for the news. Steve says, why do people fantasy book then get upset when their fantasy booking doesn't become reality? Um, selfishness? Like, we all fantasy book here and we have fun with it, but we don't get annoyed about it. Yes, Sid, Mako Satomura is still signed to WWE. Dylan says, hi Tom, just wondering if you know if Jay will ever get a singles championship. I don't know that, and neither does Jay or any of the creative team, because his career is far from over. Far from over. Eric says, will Julie go to NXT Europe or go to NXT proper? She cannot go to a promotion that does not exist. 
Alice says, Tom, in a video you did before WrestleMania, you said you had heard from WWE that Penn had been put to paper for Drew. Is that true? Because everyone else is saying he hasn't. As I said at that time, I had a report and a rumor, and I made it very clear that it was not something I'd been able to get a second source on. I remain confident that Drew McIntyre is going nowhere, and there have been considerable suggestions, considerable suggestions to me that that contract is signed. But I cannot, in good conscience, sit here and say, this has happened. I can't do that. So I'm not going to. Joey says, do you see any of the wrestlers from Marigold making the jump to WWE? Yup. Michael says, via Tokyo Sports, Rossi Ogawa's Marigold plans to invite WWE stars Io Sky and Kairi Sane to a big match this summer. Genetic ACGT. That's a whole mouthful. Says, hello, everyone. Welcome, man. Jeff says, why is every fan's fantasy booking double turn and face turn, then the next week they double turn again? People get very excited about things. Spider-Boss says, it annoyed me to see Cody making fun of the Bloodlines fans. Uh, I don't think he did. Dylan says, Tommy Free is seriously injured, will she have to vacate the championship? News on Rhea Ripley is incoming. Danny asks the exact same question. News on Rhea Ripley, as I mentioned, is incoming. Okay, it, it's there, don't worry, but we have a little bit to go first. The news broke when I was already scripted. That's why it's at the end, okay? Stick with me. It coming. We're now going to go to NXT and the WWE draft. The WWE draft is obviously going to be a huge, huge point going forwards and something that re definitely draws a lot of eyes to the product. NXT's involvement is going to be heavy. I first reported uh, last week that NXT were going to be involved in the draft. This was confirmed on NXT the next night and then reported by Fightful Select and suddenly blew up on the Friday or the Saturday. One of those. Either way, well after I'd already reported it. So nice once again to have a report confirmed. I have seven names. Seven names. Some of which you've heard already, but seven names that have been mentioned to me as people in NXT who are likely to be called up to the main roster. These are not finalized. People have not been informed. These are the names that the WWE are passing around when it comes to Raw and SmackDown call-ups. There are seven of them. Who do you think is amongst those seven? Let's fantasy book, let's guess, let's speculate, let's go wild. One of them you are definitely not getting, okay? Give me your options. Who have you got? Who do you see coming? I'll catch up with the chat while you can... Uh, continue to load things up and once I have plenty to read I'll be sure to read what people think is going to be happening thank you very much genetic for following a uh, wiggly says that's my mate we lived together at college when I was in the US please make him feel welcome will do wiggly absolutely welcome very much wants to say Tom according to you of course Finn Balor was likely to leave when does his contract end did I say he was likely to leave I said he's the one I least likely believe will sign a new deal it's an intricate thing here and I'm trying to cover my back. You know this. You know this. Spider Boss says, it surprised me Liv Morgan's accuracy, accuracy to throw a steel chair to Rhea on backstage last week. You say that like it was intended that way. King Gather says, do you see Chad winning the IC Championship? I see him turning heel and winning. Again, a heel turn. Dylan says, when do you see Jacob Fatu making his debut? When he is ready. I'm, I'm not sure why we need the source on that one, Sid. Natalia and Jordan Grace are doing that publicly. Bad of us, so I wonder why Raj Giri never confirmed his news about WWE firing Mercedes money in 2022. Who would confirm it? We have our first guess is Storm Stop, says Roxanne. Danny says, is CM Punk going to be on both nights of the draft? Yes. Juan also has Roxanne. Somebody has been reading my Twitter feed. Wiggly says, I think I'll be fantasy drafted to Raw for some reason. Chris says, Roxanne. Jess says, throw that guy with the Italian gimmick on SmackDown. Noob says, Ilya Druganoff and Roxanne Perez. Alad has Carmelo Hayes, Roxanne Perez and Ilya Druganoff. David Leary says, Druganov, Mello, Roxanne, and Trick. Dylan has Ilya, Ilya Dragon and Roxanne Perez. Sid has Chase U, the entire thing. Joey has Ilya and Roxanne. Robin Dave says, hey, Tom, when Solo told Paul Heyman by order of the Tribal Chief, Paul Heyman was confused. Do you think Solo did it himself or The Rock told him to do it? I think that's a key story element and would be a massive spoiler that would ruin a lot of people's fun. Rosal says, Carmelo, Trick, Roxanne, Ilya, and Tony D. She says, will we get an Uncle Howdy tease tonight? I covered all of that right at the beginning issue. You are here for it. If you want to hear it again, just zip back to the beginning. Danny says, Roxanne, Carmelo, and Druganov. 
Crush says Roxanne Perez, Lyra Valkyria, Carmelo Hayes, Ilya Drugunov, Dijak, Baron Corbin, Briggs and Jensen. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And thus, not eligible. Moxie says, yo, welcome, mate. Wiggly says, what happened to Zia Lee? Nothing. King Elder says, Roxanne Perez and Tony D'Angelo. Sovic says, Tony D'Angelo, Ilya Drugunov, Carmelo Hayes, Keanu James, Izzy Dane, Baron Corbin, Lexus King. There's a seven. But that's not the exact ones. Alice says, what is it with everyone talking about heel turns? I think it's just an obsession. I need to turn heel on my drink. Dylan says, Carmelo and Trick. Brad says, Ilya, Roxanne, Gigi and Blair are the only ones I've got. Mark says, Roxanne, Trick, Carmelo, Druganov, Corbin, Tia Hale and Tony. Uh, Cho says, can we get Rikishi as new travel chief? Nope. Kevin says, can we see the draft for the main roster talent go back to NXT? Yep, main roster talent will be moving to NXT as reported right here on Spoiler Warning this time last week. Marcel says Trick, Roxanne, Ilya, and Mello. Spiderboss says Roxanne and Carmelo Hayes. Moxie says, Tom, what do you think about the Bloodline's recent swerve? I told you it was going to happen uh, before Raw. Eric says Dragon, Roxanne, Cora, Corbin, D'Angelo, Blair, Carmelo. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Nice. Wiggly says, I think Xylee will be drafted to NXT and thinks Sheamus will challenge Priest. Uh, Priest already has a challenger, Jey Uso. Jack says, Tony, Breaker, Druganov, Roxanne, Ilya, Carmelo, Corbin. Robin Dave wants Cora Jade to be called up, but she's injured. Spiderboss says, Paul Heyman's facial expressions are priceless. I was, uh, he was really scared when Solo Sokoa smashed his cell phone. Roger says, are you a fan of Chase U? I am. I haven't really seen much of him. I don't watch that much NXT. Alyssa says, Liv Morgan needs heel turn tonight. She needs full heel turn love. Edgy Liv Morgan needs very much edgy love. New Liv Morgan unhinged. Jay says, Roxanne, Trick, Carmelo, Bron, Corbin, Lyra, JC, Jane. Joey says, do you see any big names getting drafted to NXT? Or will it be mostly people that aren't being used? It'll mostly be people that aren't being used. Leon says, Lexis King. Beatrice is talking about Rhea again. Danny says, Cross and AOP going down to NXT. Jess says, put Lexis King in the Judgment Day. Uh, Wiggly is talking about final bosses. So, a number of NXT names have been mentioned to me as strong contenders for a call-up to either Raw or SmackDown. Full predictions will of course be incoming. I'll be sure to uh, use PLE Wednesday heavily, heavily for these draft predictions. But if I can just throw out the names that have been mentioned to me. And yes, all of these names have been mentioned. One of you got the one I didn't expect you to get, but you didn't put seven. You put eight. So it doesn't count. Bron Breaker has, of course, been mentioned. He is someone that the WWE has already signed. He will be called up. There is no doubt whatsoever. Roxanne Perez has, of course, been mentioned. The WWE eager to get her on the main roster. They did a soft call up over a year ago now to just get her onto that main roster and featured, but it did not quite pan out the way they were planning because other people came back to the roster. Carmelo Hayes has of course been mentioned. The feud with Trick Williams is not over and is likely to continue on the main roster because Trick Williams has also been mentioned to me. Three more names, we have 59 likes. 101 people here, 59 likes, give me one more. Give me one more guys, get me up to that 60 and we'll keep this ball rolling. We have three more names to add. So far I've had Bron Breaker, Roxanne Perez, Carmelo Hayes and Trick Williams. There are three more names to read out from this list of people in NXT. Yes, we have Cora Jade. I know she's injured. The WWE are considering managerial roles or simply putting her in as a talk show host like with Grayson Waller, at least briefly, to get her over before she then starts wrestling again. Ilya Druganov, no surprises there, is a name that's been mentioned, though his call-up is said to be dependent on what happens to Gunter. They've not decided what's going to happen to Gunter. Will he be on Raw? Will he be on SmackDown? They're trying to work out the rest of that, and that will have an impact on what happens to Ilya Druganov. The last name is Josh Briggs. It was indeed mentioned that Josh Briggs was potentially being looked at as a call-up WWE and Triple H were very impressed with his work on TakeOver. There is also a possibility that Dijak gets called back up to the main roster, but they're not 100% certain that he wants to go to the main roster, so they may leave him to it. They may leave him to it. Cool. 
still quite a lot of guesses came in when I moved on to it. Spider Boss says GG Dolan and JC Jane and Tony D'Angelo. Moxie says Dragon and Trick can't be called up at the same time. They're having an NXT title match. And if Trick loses, he leaves NXT. That would mean the winner would have to stay on NXT. Would it? Chris says, I want to see Roxanne Perez on SmackDown. Moxie says Cross winning the NXT title soon to rebuild him. Noob says Paul Heyman's actually fearing for his life when Solo Sokoa destroyed the phone. Spider Boss had Dijak and Joey Gacy. Joey Gacy. Chris says, Lyra Valkyria, Baron Corbin, and Tony D. I suspect Baron Corbin will be coming up as well. I, d- I definitely expect that to happen. Boom indeed, Moxie. Danny says, what would happen with Roxanne's championship, which you have to vacate? They are currently working that out as we speak. Ken says, say, Tom, do you think they have Roxanne do both shows, or will they vacate the title or simply lose it? They are currently working that out as we speak. Chris says, I still thought they were teaming. Sid just lists everyone. Joey says, that is the most random name to get called up. I know, right? I told you. Michael says, why did they give Roxanne and previously Indy the women's title just to move them to the main roster weeks later? Because the call-ups, are you going to love this? Triple H decides the call-ups without directly in getting input from Shawn Michaels. So Triple H did not 100% know who was going to be champion when he started calling them up. Spider Boss said, I think WWE could pair Cora Jade with Roxanne Perez while Cora is still injured. If a Mike welcome, says welcome back, Bo, but man, I'm just not a fan of the supernatural stuff. Mark says Josh Briggs, stand and deliver, did him wonders. Selvig says Dijak deserves his call up this time in being better booked. Jess says Cora J gets a talk show called Jaded and then feuds with Jade Cargill over it. I love that. Rosal says Baron Corbin and Bronner are a great team. I think a main roster tag run would be cool. If a Mike says Josh Briggs was kind of a big deal and evolved. No, he was. David Leary says I suspect Roxanne drops the belt to Julia. Might be a while then. And Ross says, Tom, when you mentioned Dijak, has he signed a new deal? I don't have information on that at this point in time. As I say, he was discussed, but they don't know if he wants to be there. That is kind of telling when you think about it. Joey says, do you think Gigi Dolan could get called up since she's been in NXT for a while? I'm waiting on more information. I've given you all of the names that I've had mentioned to me. Danny says, Tiffany will win Money in the Bank in July as part of a big push, in my opinion. Lots of fantasy booking happening today. I like it. Keep it going, guys. Share your love. Two more pieces of news. We have Nick Khan negotiating with other wrestling promotions and we have an update on Rhea Ripley. So, rumours abound of Nick Khan seeking to work with a variety of wrestling promotions. I've finally been able to get some information and it's not particularly surprising news. Nick Khan is looking for options to work with to essentially, pardon me, send people out onto excursion, which means that people who maybe aren't on TV for a couple of weeks or a couple of months can go to a different promotion and build their stock there, as well as building the stock of the promotion, which is very similar to what Tony Khan was looking for in his relationship with TNA, but TNA didn't exactly get the rub of the green for it. AEW, and in fact, Stardom, are absolutely not going to be options to work with going forwards. There is simply zero interest in working with AEW in any capacity. Because whenever they've had negotiations and conversations with AEW, things simply haven't gone the way that they wanted them to. Entertainingly, and I always enjoy sharing these bits, Nick Khan is said to have found the discourse very funny around AEW signed all the big free agents. When in the last couple of years they've captured Cody Rhodes, Jay Cargill and Tamatonga to name a few. Khan is extremely confident in the continued success of the WWE and it's difficult to really argue that concept when they are still firmly the biggest game in town. Dylan says, when do you think Jane Jim will, will reunite? I don't know if they will. Steve says, shouldn't Triple H and HBK be working together when it comes to call-ups or does that make too much sense? And I imagine they've started working together recently. Boss says, uh, Paige got called up to the main roster while still NXT Women's Champion. WWE forced her to vacate the title. Vacating the title would be the easiest way for Roxanne Perez to not lose the NXT Women's title. Also, uh, losing the championship would be the easiest way to lose it while also putting someone else over. Danny says, smash the like button for Tom. He does an amazing job. We are on 69 likes. One more gets us to 70. And 70 is a lovely round number. Thank you, Danny. So it says, Funda Rosa reveals potential need for future back surgery. Source wrestling news source. Thank you for sourcing, Sid, and thank you for bringing the news. I appreciate that. We have reached the point that we've all been waiting for. I know so many of you are waiting for this one. We have an update on Rhea Ripley. 
I cannot sit here and say I know everything. I'm going to make that very clear from the off. I cannot sit here and say that I know everything because I don't. Tell you what I do know. Rhea Ripley was injured on Monday Night Raw. The clip going around social media of this is when she was injured is not accurate. She was injured at a different point during the backstage brawl. It is not believed to be Liv Morgan's fault. It is believed to be a freak accident. As regards vacating the championship, Rhea Ripley has not passed a fitness check upon further examination. And uh, essentially the WWE have been informed you need to be careful with her. That unfortunately, and I know you're gonna be annoyed here, that's the news I've got. She has failed a fitness check. It means she will need to be protected going forwards. Likely tonight she'll get into it physically with Liv Morgan and take a little time to rest. I don't know if she's going to be vacating the championship because if her injury is less than, say, three months expected, I wouldn't let her. I sure as hell would not have her vacate that championship. There's shows in all different countries coming up. They don't have to take the belt away. If they do, there is a number of different pitches being put together at the moment as uh, nobody will be too surprised the name Liv Morgan is coming up as a potential transitional champion until Rhea Ripley returns quite a lot. Ooh. Oxy says, I think Cody goes to Raw with the Bloodline stay on SmackDown, so Cody can be away from the Bloodline until SummerSlam, and he can then face him because The Rock isn't going to get drafted. He would be a free agent. As I said, Asuka vacated the NXT title before her call-up, but I think she was injured, as she was injured just as she was brought up. One says, even if WWE and AW were together, it would be too political and controversial about who can go over. They would not be working together. Spider-Boss says, watching Lashley's feud with Cross made me feel bad for Lashley. Lashley should get a main event push. Uh, connecting people says, just watched Mustafa Ali in Chicago at Freelance Wrestling, Leo Rush and Dan Housen last month. Oh, anything involving Mustafa Ali, I'm there, mate. Michael says, why was Naomi the only person to vacate due to injury? Good question. Especially considering how brief that injury lasted. D Freeman says, don't like the draft and call-ups all in the same thing because you have to re-establish the stars who you, got so, or you just so-called drafted and trying to put new people in who need a lot to be able to get over. It is a difficult, tumultuous time, and that is a fair comment. Steve says, Raw's in Montreal tonight, guys. Expect a screw job spot and or reference. Joey says, I think WWE will protect Rhea like they did with Seth and have her not wrestle for a couple of weeks until she's healed up. Alad has anyone but live. Danny says, will there be an update on Raw tonight then on this? We'll find out. I don't have the details of what's going to happen on Raw tonight. Uh, not sure. Not sure connecting people. I don't have uh, information on that. I don't have sources there. Eddie says, I hope the main four re-sign with WWE. Did you see Omega in WWE in the future after what he said in his Twitch? Pure guesswork. Jess says, they've had PLEs where Rhea hasn't defended. I don't know why this would be any different unless she's out for six plus months. Spider-Boss says WWE should be careful with Rhea. Liv Morgan got injured last year and WWE rushed her return. Very true. Chris says Roxanne Perez versus Bailey for the WWE Women's Championship will be fun to see. Shifty says Usos reunite, which is a question and I can't answer it at this point in time. Kervin says if Rhea Ripley vacated her championship, what about tournament final two? Nia Jax versus Liv Morgan. So if this happens, what about this? We don't know. Beatrice, yes, Rhea is at Raw tonight. It won't be, a, it's not a will be. She is at Raw tonight. Leon says Tamatonga's debut got more view. That's bait. Moxie says I would just have Rhea do what Seth did when he was hurt. She shouldn't get into physical activities, but should just do promos. Uh, but have like live attack Dom or something. Dominic Mysterio is pretty good to get punched in the face. You did, Danny. I also, yeah, that's something that happened. Spider-Boss says actually it would be good if Liv Morgan beat Rhea. Liv can hold the title while Rhea recovers from injury. Beatrice says, when does Raw start in the Europe time zone? Uh, midnight UK time. Jess says, when Rhea vacates the title and comes back and wins the tag titles with Dirty Dom, which is not going to happen. We peaked at 111 viewers. We have had 72 likes and 304 views, and we are going to wrap it up there. We will be back on Wednesday for PLE Wednesdays when we start looking ahead to Backlash in France. Until then, I've been Tom Collihue. You've been fantastic and we'll see you all very soon.